Floyd, Virginia, a mountain town, 2,800 feet above sea level, maybe 20 minutes off of Route 81, one stoplight in the middle of the town. You would think that nothing's happening in this town. It's so small, you can drive through really quickly. Like within three or four minutes, you can go from one side of the town to the other. And as you're leaving, you see this sign up at a old gas station says, Make America Kind Again. What is happening in Floyd anyway? One of the things I heard about, I've been here about 10 years, but one of the things I heard was that Floyd was mentioned in the whole Earth catalog back in the 1970s. And people who were headed to the farm community in Tennessee stopped here to check it out, never made it down to the farm. They decided to start their own type of commune here. So one of the cool things about Floyd that distinguishes it from other small towns, it has a whole lot of small communities, land trusts, and people still living together back from the 70s, housing, co-housing, and stuff like that. Many, many, many of these, and they're all hidden in the woods and in the hills. Floyd, Virginia, which we live in, is this really unique place. It's a small mountain town. It's, what, 2,500 feet above sea level? Mm -hmm. 25 to 28, 29, yeah. Yeah, and um, it's, um, it's uh, nestled in the mountains in southwest Virginia. And um, it's on what's called the Crooked Road, which is, the Crooked Road is this road where um, a lot of Appalachian music, traditional Appalachian music took place over the last couple hundred years. And it's attracted a lot of people who um, are um, into bluegrass and old time music. At the same time, it's also attracted people who don't play that type of music and who have grown up here, who were, you know, listened to bluegrass in old time, but decided they would do something different and they developed their own kind of sound. And um, so it's developed this really unique um, music, the Floyd Americana scene, we might call it, that's kind of a, a good way of, of characterizing it, that's different than the other traditional music that's more out front that the public comes to see. But it's sort of like a, a secret in a way that of, of the town of Floyd. It has this other whole other music scene called the Americana scene. And Stella and I are part of that. Floyd Americana scene and it involves a lot of songwriters and people who play music that's just as Appalachian as the old time Appalachian as well. And
Duluth's a small town, so everybody kind of knows everybody else, and it's it was a way for everybody to get to know each other better and to listen to everybody's music, you know, because I'm mostly a bass player. I feel like the Americana and bluegrass. I mean, I, I see a lot of people floating between those two groups, you know, and I, I think it's all kind of a, you know, there, there's a lot of respect and, and just you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of freedom here. You can play whatever you want. I think the big thing about Floyd is, per capita, we probably have as many musicians as anywhere, including like places like New York or whatever. Maybe not Nashville, but uh, a lot of musicians and a lot of places to play at this point. And so we've developed this really unique sound here. I think it's unique to Floyd, and you know. We talk about Appalachian music, the traditional Appalachian music, and I love it, and that's one of the reasons I came here. But traditional Appalachian music is music that was vital 100 years ago. And everybody who's playing it is really playing cover tunes, mm -hmm. the cover bands, and which is fine. And I love that we respect the traditional ways of the people who were here before. And Appalachian music is really um, a combination of Irish and Celtic music and African music because it was ultimately the slaves and the plantation owners that got together to play the type of music. And so that was then, it was vital then, but now the real vital, at least in my opinion, the real vital Appalachian music is the Americana music because that's being created right now. It's an expression of what's happening right now. And some of the songwriters that you're gonna see and hear in this film are going to be uh, people who have written this stuff currently. It's, it's it's original and it's 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 based on things that have happened here and, and around here and in yeah. their lives. Well, I heard this knock on my door. It was some guy i never seen before. I knew what he was gonna say. But the Bible kinda gave it away. And I was hoping he wouldn't ask me to pray. He said, if you die tonight, where would you go? I had to fight that urge to say. How the hell would I know? He said he had no doubt. Heaven's where he was going. And I needed to believe like him. Cause that's the only sure way of knowing. I may be the least spiritual person. But you know, the promise of eternal life don't entry. But if it brings you peace, it helps you sleep at night. I guess you ought to stick with what you believe. Well, my wife went to this funeral out of town. church back there. She said, I've been Catholic all my life. He said, that won't get you nowhere. I may be the least spiritual person, but you know, the promise of eternal life don't intrigue. But if it brings you peace, it helps you sleep at night. I guess you are still what you believe. Jesus died on the cross, then he rose again. A Buddha reached nirvana, then he shed his earthly skin. And Muhammad, oh, he flew up to heaven. On the back of a winged horse, he probably only believed one of these. It's where y'all from that determines the course. 
I may be the least spiritual person, but you know, the promise of eternal life don't intrigue. But if it brings you peace and helps you sleep at night, then I guess you ought to stick what you believe. And if you want to, friend, you can pray for me. So anyway, this is... Um you're going to get to see some really good music and a incredible scene. And if you're a singer songwriter or a musician that wants to move to Floyd, consider it. Consider coming here and joining our little tight lit, tight knit community. It's not exclusive. We don't, we're not cliquish. Um, we're not, um, we don't say you can't come in. Look, I have a New York accent <laughs> and um, I believe obviously from New York and people have been here years and who are been born and raised here except me. Matter of fact, I, you know, when I play music, sometimes I call myself Alien Being. And we have a band called Stellar, Stellar and Alien Being. And I call myself Alien Being because I felt like I sometimes don't fit in. I'm from another planet. And, um, but I do, as an alien, I'm accepted. You know, right. in Floyd, which is which is cool. It's it's, it's a good it's a good good scene. Yeah, if you can call yourself alien being in a town like Floyd and get away with it, that's pretty good. Yeah. So anyway, um, that's the music of Floyd, and enjoy yourself. Let's hug each other anyway. We need our strength for the journey ahead. It's gonna take everything we got. Keep our heads above the water Coming together of the people along the way Ooh, we're in need of celebration Ooh, turn me upside down The music scene is happening in Floyd, and if you're a musician and you want to experience a community of musicians, a family of musicians, this is the place to come to. Listening to some of the music, you know, the musicians, they're just a small sample of what's happening in Floyd. But you have something, somebody like Stella Trudell, who has been here for years and years, who plays her own brand of folk music. It's really heartfelt and creative and poetic and mystical. She plays with a bunch of various musicians. She's been doing it a long time. And then you have somebody like Kerry Hankley, who has been here, born, you know, around Dublin, but has been part of the Floyd scene for years. And again, she has her own unique sound. It's very country rock folk and bluegrass all in one and she writes really heartfelt tunes of love and betrayal and it's interesting when you talk about appalachian music a lot of people think about bluegrass and old-time music but carrie's music is really you know today's authentic appalachian music it's amazing in that way how she sings and when you hear her it kind of touches your heartstrings and there's Will and Jody. Um, Will's a teacher in his other life, but he writes these really cool, eclectic tunes about life. And it reflects his attitude of, hey, we can live with this. We can, we can manage. So you hear this sort of stuff. And, um, and then Brad Collier, who's been playing for years as part of the Floyd scene as well as another amazing musician. All of these put together comprise the Floyd Americana scene and it keeps thriving, it keeps going and even though it's really sort of part of the Appalachian, traditional Appalachian scene, it's really its own separate being its own separate animal. Well, one, two, three, four. She 
walks down Down her hallway Stumbles to who Her gets in She puts on A lot of coffee Just like she's done So many times before But today, hey There's something different Face. And after work, she's got plans made, playing music with her friends, and they'll sing. Are oh, you lonesome tonight? They'll sing the time of your life, and they'll sing. That'll be the day. The cool thing is, is as you get to live here and play music with people, they accept you as part of the family, whether you've been here a few years or you've been here years and years and years. That's kind of the beauty of the Floyd Americana scene. It's a family. And everybody respects each other's music, respects each other's creativity, and encourages each other to be creative in how they do stuff, because they know it's a positive thing. It's, when you come to Floyd, you just feel the vibe. The music scene feels like a small town within a small town. And there's a handful of little musical families that have some overlap and this and that. But yeah, it's, it's, it is very tight knit and everything. And even the people I don't know, you know, we have people that we play with in common and things like that. So it is, it is a very cool uh, scene. Does Floyd have its own sound? I think it does in that the people who make the music have a lot of creativity and so it's the, the music comes from those people it's organic from the, the people of Floyd and it's not like it's like a, a wine from a region is is unique to the region I, I feel like the people of Floyd are are, are really unique to the, the place and the music is is reflective of, of that. One, two, one, two, three, four. Searching for the answers Questions in my mind But you shall not find the answers Won't you see the find Won't you see the find There's, uh, there's such an interesting convergence of people here in Floyd to begin with that, you know, it's not like most other small towns and the music that happens here often reflects that because people are playing. You get people who like to play all sorts of different stuff and those styles will all cross over in the course of one set or one afternoon, you know, so it's... It's kind of cool like that. There's all sorts of different stuff coming in into the scene. Wash me clean. I believe that your water might be the death of me. Might be the death of me. I come all the way from Dublin, Virginia just to make music in Floyd because there is no other place like the music scene in Floyd. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit of bluegrass, a little bit of rock and roll. A little bit of country and hey, some folk all mixed in together. So you uh, can't find that anywhere else in this this area that I know of within 50 miles of my house. So The Floyd Americana scene is like a family of its own. People know of each other. They respect each other. They come to each other's musical gatherings. We play, we're almost like incestuous. We play in each other's we bands, are. you know, and everybody plays and switches around, and one person's this band, they switch to another band, and so... Um, we need each other, because yeah. sometimes one person is sick, so we, we, um, have, we have to ask another person to, to fill in, or... So we all 
learn each other's songs and know each other's songs, and that's it's really um, so it's, it's a family. My mom played stand-up piano when um, she was young, and she sang like Ethel Merman. She had, I don't know if you ever heard Ethel Merman, but she had this really vibrato, like, <laughs> And she was grandiose. She played like Liberace. She would just attack the piano and just put life into it. She was very lively. And I, you know, um, one of my first memories, I learned, I was, I just learned how to play. I, I, I started on piano, but then I, um, and um, as I was learning piano, my mom would invite people over, um, you know, for dinner or whatever. And then suddenly there'd be a voice ringing out, Alan, come in and play for company. And I was like, oh my God, I would dread it. And I was like, oh, I didn't really want to sit and have to, Alan, come in here instant. Everybody's waiting for you to play <laughs> for them. I was like, no, mom, no, no. And then I'd get there and I'd play, and then everybody would applaud. I'd go, I like this. <laughs> this is pretty cool. I see so many opinions, I know nothing at all. 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 So I found out. I found out you're like one of the people who've been around here for a while. Yeah, I grew up here. I grew up in Floyd. Yeah. So what's the Floyd music scene been like? How's it developed? Uh, well, when I was a uh, kid around here, it was mostly, I mean, the you know bluegrass and old time thing on the weekends uh, downtown. Uh, and my experience was mainly like playing Beatles songs in our bedrooms, <laughs> you know. But now it's it's you know there are bars and clubs and places to play and you know so many more musicians than when I grew up, you know, than when I was growing up here. You know, I went away for a number of years traveling and. And by the time I got back, there was just all these great folk musicians and stuff hanging around and playing music. So it was pretty cool to come back to, you know. Yes, I sat and looked out the window. Music to me has always been, I have like two parts of my brain. I'm an activist and a lawyer in one part, and the other part is a musician. The activist part is I've always been trying to change society for the better, but fighting it, fighting like people who are abusive of the power. I represent prisoners and disabled people and veterans and protesters and tree sitters. I've homeless people. I've represented all sorts of people as, as a lawyer and as an activist. I've been out in the streets fighting against the government. But as a musician, that's the beautiful balance of that is I get to like heal and bring people together. And it doesn't matter what their political persuasion is, what, what they think, whether they're Democrat or Republican or Biden or Trump or this or that, music brings everybody together. It's something they all have in common. And they all have in common. And it's really interesting. Um, you know, I played, um, you know, here when I first came here, I learned what to learn how to play banjo, and I played with a lot of the old conservative folks. And, um, you know, they would always ask me, where are you from anyway, when they heard my accent? I'm like, well, I'm, you know, my wife's from Martinsville, so that always used to be okay. But one guy in the last, you know, from the last election, 
he was like, you know, what's, you know, who did you vote for? And I told him, and he was like really mad at me. And, you know, he was an old guy, he was in the 80s. He said, he's never going to speak to me again because of who I voted for. And he was just really mad at me. And then I saw him months later, after the election was over and everybody had sort of calmed down, and he was 86, and he was playing on the streets of Floyd. And I was wondering how he felt about me. And he was playing for a while, and then suddenly he gets up from where all the people are playing, and he walks over to me, and I'm sitting there, and he goes, hey, listen, I'm going in to get a drink in the country store, but my old Martin there, you can, go, you can pick it up and play that Martin. I knew at that point, he was kind of like, hey, we're cool, man. It's like, you know, this politics isn't going to get between us. We're going to play music. And that's the beauty of music. And that's why I feel like, for me, it's really important to be both an activist that's fighting to change the world, but also bringing it together, too. Right. That's part of it. I woke up feeling rough. The Lord knows I felt worse. Just glad I'm not lying in the back of some hearse. Some point in the night, told myself that tired old line. But and then Will, uh, Will writes a lot about the people in Floyd. You know, people who, who he's, you know, loved and cared about, and uh, people who have died that we all cared about. And uh, he's got some really great songs. There was one song about a um, somebody stole a bass from the country store in Floyd. It, was it the country store that that? Yeah. yeah, they stole this huge stand-up bass and um, and tried to get away with it and it was just wasn't going to happen you can't steal something like that so so uh, that was he, he read the story of that song and it's pretty funny yeah. still you're you're a singer songwriter and you've been here how many years 30 I've off and on but I I, I winter in the in the west in, in Austin but uh, you know, for me, I was when I came to Floyd. I, I was looking for, um, for for folk music, and it was hard for me to find folk music here because um, it was all bluegrass and it was all old time. And so I, I kind of set out to to find the people that um, I could relate to. And Alan was one of those people. He he played the kind of music that I liked. So we've developed a friendship over the years. Songwriting um, came about. It was. Um, I had I'd become a hip hypnotherapist, and I was having people come to me on a regular basis to to go into hypnosis, and um, I, I found that I would go in kind of into that state with them, and I got pretty good at becoming a receiver for for a con, kind of a conduit for what was coming in, which was uh, kind of the sound of the universe, the the voice of the universe, and. Um, when I stopped doing hypnosis and really decided I wanted to completely devote myself to songwriting, that was the way that I tapped in to, to receive songs and to, um, I almost feel like there is a, a collective in the universe of, um, of, of songwriters. Maybe they're alive, maybe they're dead, maybe they're, we're all just here together right now, but that, that somehow that's, that is the voice of, of, um, the voice of music, and when we're all singing it, and we're all this one this great one thing, that's just singing, singing. The music and art go together, in fact. What's starting up is a Floyd Music and Art Americana Festival. That's, it's the second year and it's making, and it's gonna combine Floyd's artists and musicians. It's a quiet town you drive through, you don't think anything's happening. And yet it's bubbling with creativity. And a lot of it's back in the woods. It comes out every now and then at fairs and festivals, people playing. You have the Floyd Country Store, which is sort of the epicenter of Floyd, which is focused on the, uh, the traditional Appalachian music of bluegrass and old time. And then you have Dogtown, um, which has more uh, bands that are play all sorts of stuff, Americana music, folk music and stuff. Keep her. Keep her. Keep her. Keep her. Keep her. Keep her. 
batten down the hatches, get our stuff together. We could be in for more stormy weather. It's hard to say how long this will last, so all hands on deck until this passes. All hands on deck until this passes. and you're tired of being in the city, you know, competing for a club time and stuff like that, Floyd is the place to come because what Floyd is, it's not only a mountain town, it's a mystical mountain town. It's a town where clouds come through and hang out with people on the street. It's high up there. And you can look out at the mountains. You can go up to the Blue Ridge Parkway and see way, 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 way out in the distance. And you can tell, you can sort of see that people have been here for a long time living in the mountains and playing music. And the music and the mountains all combined together to produce the sound, the sound of Floyd. So, dig it. children think of inheriting a world that's nearly on the brink, falling apart like a leaky sink. Well, eventually that thing, it had to give. Well, I just got myself a brand new job, for goodness. I built a garden in my new grandma's yard. I did it for my elders, I did it for God. I did it just because I can. It's time to batten down the hatches, get our stuff together. Could be in for more stormy weather. It's hard to say how long this will last. So all hands on deck until this passes. All hands on deck until this passes. 